Janet Enning is one of those who have been on that lonely, enduring path of battling cervical cancer. She is 73 years old. I have come to her house at Salt Pond in the central region to speak with her. <laughs> Auntie Janet is a retired nurse. She's excited to be alive today to share her story. The condition started in 2016, a few days after she panicked over the sudden collapse of her daughter. I was cooking. Then I felt some unusual, uh, I thought it's a breeding. Mm. Not knowing it's not a breeding. Mm. So I thought because of what happened, say, hey, this breeding from where? So I went inside. What I saw was a heavy discharge. Uh -huh, heavy discharge. I thought it was stopped. For five days, it, is, it was not stopped. Auntie Janet did the right thing. She didn't hesitate seeking medical attention at the Confinochi Teaching Hospital. When they passed the speculum and the teaching forceps, I think they saw blood. Mm. And they take some specimen from uh, And they made me understand that I should go. But the result will come. I came. About 10 months, my child called me. Mama, the result has come on. Eh. She was not telling me the truth. This thing is very, very fine, I see you. Later, she felt she has to tell me the correct thing. She told me, that, let me tell you point blank that you will come for an, uh, what do I call it, operation. Hey, operation. And I think all your uh, you trust will be removed. I say, hey, are you going to bring forth again? I say, no, I'm not going to bring forth. But in fact, I was afraid. So she agreed for her uterus to be removed to save her life. Though Auntie Janet is better now, she has still not come to terms as to how she had the disease, though she has not been sexually active for many years. But Dr. Thomas Coney, obstetric gynecologic oncologist, says there is a possible explanation. The patient who has never had sexual intercourse, we don't, I would say generally, expect to have cervical cancer. And this latency period that I talked about, for some patients from the pre-cancer to the cancer may take 20 years. For some patients, up to 25 years. There are few patients where that latency period is about five years, but on the average about 10 years which gives us that window period to be able to catch them when the pre-cancer has not developed into cancer. So what it means is that, yes, at the point that the old lady will know that she has cancer, most often it will be advanced. At the oncology unit of the Confinochi Teaching Hospital, 66-year-old Yao Buama, whose wife is battling cervical cancer, confirms this. They never sought medical attention until after five years. We concluded it was a spiritual disease, so I sent her to a prayer camp twice, yet she didn't get better. They kept taking money from us. I was so worried, so I took her to a Muslim traditional healer. Still, her condition was deteriorating. Observing the pain she was going through, especially at night, I then decided to take her to hospital. Yabuama, his wife and their four children, now rely on family and friends for their upkeep. He has sold their large cocoa farms and other properties to help save the life of his dear wife. Yabuama is not ready to lose her. I am afraid my wife will die and I will not see her again. I rather lose my investment than to lose my wife. If God gives me strength, at least, 
I can work and have them back. My concern was to just look for someone to buy them. So I eventually got a buyer and that gave me some money to cater for her treatment. But it's finished in no time. So I had to sell my plot of land too. Now, that money has also finished. Friends and well wishes are those supporting us with some token. His 60 year old wife, Yafufia, still cannot believe she is battling a disease she had long thought was far from her. <laughs> I had no idea what cancer was all about. I didn't know it could attack the uterus in the stomach. All I knew about it was that it attacks only the leg. I wept when I was told it was cancer, which I knew kills. At the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital, gynecologist Dr. Adu Apia Kubi notes the high illiteracy about the disease it's not the only reason patients like Yafu fear delay in seeking help. Most of them are due to one ignorance of the disease. They don't even know the disease exists. And then the other one is um, uh, lack of education, illiteracy. Um, they have the, they know, they, they, they don't even know anything about the disease. And then they even know, they don't know where to send the, 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 the problems to. That's why most of them resort to these pastors, churches, and all those things. And then um, the, other, the other one, to poverty. Um, the patient is at um, a very... Uh, um, um, the patient doesn't have a lot of money, he doesn't know where to go and all that. When Yafu Fio was experiencing frequent discharge with intermittent bleeding, she assumed she was experiencing another phase of menopause. Because it was painless, it reinforced her conviction to treat it lightly. She, however, became alarmed when she realized she was growing lean. I used to be plumpy with well-endowed back. I had a lot of flesh around my neck, unlike the bones you see now. I never imagined cancer could cross my path one day. From what I am going through, I can tell you it is better to commit suicide so you die fast than waiting for this cancer to hit you. It is a bad disease. We show the second part of our documentary, Cervix in Crisis, produced by Seb Kwame Boateng. Uh, later this evening and tomorrow as well. I'm um, sure you remember last week we started with the conversation uh, ahead uh, of uh, premiering of that documentary. Uh, we had a, an extensive conversation, in fact, on Tuesday after the first part of the documentary aired last Monday. So if you've still got questions on this particular subject, get ready to give me a call today. We've got lots of time for, for you to give us a call. Uh, but in studio for us to have a conversation and also to get practical in terms of what to expect because we've been talking about how it is not painful. Uh, it's a test that can be done in about five minutes, but some people still want some convincing. So we'll get really practical on the show this morning and you can send us your WhatsApp messages as well. Put a line, uh, the number on the screen shortly. But my guest is Rose uh, Adufo. She's Principal Nursing Officer, Kolebu reproductive health center good morning yeah, to you good morning, thank you for coming through Thanks so for uh, this whole month in fact of the month of january yeah. is one that's dedicated to a lot of education mm. of cervical cancer you're right so how are people responding to this education that we've okay. done so far right so thank you very much for this opportunity and then in fact i'm so grateful for multimedia's great intervention mm. you have made life so simple for me we're great we're, we're happy yes we're happy, happy it too. Yeah. yes and now it's really getting better and better because okay. response has been so massive 
um, to the extent that because the, the documentary is gone so wide, I have a lot of people calling from across the region wanting to know where they can go for their screening. Okay. And so now I'm actually mandated to get representatives in the various regions Great. where I could actually link them up to okay. those clients so their needs will be served. And then coming to our facility here at the Reproductive Health Center, mm -hmm. including Ridge, the, the screening has gone more than 50% increase within okay. the short period. Wow. And there are so many who have booked for the um, reduced screening okay. cost that will start from next Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, We decided to do that because of this media moves in, in and out. Mm -hmm. So that will be in-house. Because it will be the same nurses, exactly, the same doctors. The same nurses, the okay. same doctors, exactly. But meanwhile, things have been so awesome. Okay. So. Organizations, individuals calling, booking for in-house services. So okay. trust me, I want to really come and screen the ladies in-house. Okay. You don't need to come. We're ready come for you. And do that. Here. Okay. So so mm. so the impact has been really great. Very awesome. Even though we're still in the month of I January, am we haven't ended very January. Very awesome. Yet. Okay. Uh, what are the the questions that people are asking a lot when they visit? <laughs> I think the number one question is, is it painful? Mm. Because uh, the mere fact that you come in to, to kind of have an invasive procedure, you have so many misconceptions and fear of the unknown, that kind yeah. of apprehension about the procedure. Mm -hmm. And so that alone is a number one worry for them. Okay. And the other two is what if? The what is is also like because, what if what I if test, I test positive? And, exactly. What would you do for me? Was what is available for mm. me? And um, since there are so many interventions, at least it's helping to allay the fears of these people. Okay. And they are ready to to take it up because okay. at least they know when it is tested now, mm. and you get the result. There's a lot that can be done to save her life. Okay. So what's the it. beginning of the test? Because, you know, there's a conversation before the test. What's Beautiful. that conversation? Okay. So the conversation has to do with what test you are in for. We want you to really understand the whole concept. So we have stages. We call it like pre-procedure counseling mm. and then the post-procedure counseling. Okay. So with the pre-procedure, the whole thing about cervical cancer, sometimes we have videos. Whilst waiting in the room, we would want you to be observing the videos okay. so that you would not be so... Um, scared of the main procedure. Secondly, we would want you to let you know the process that one, it is not painful but a bit uncomfortable mm. because of the invasive nature. And then two, we want you to know that it is it is um, just like a five minutes procedure. The whole thing is for you to relax. Mm. When you relax, you not even feel much of the discomfort that we are talking about here. And then the next thing is to show you the things that we would use for the procedure. Okay. So that when you see them with your eyes, you are not so scared. You will mm. not be imagining what I could be doing down there because whilst I'm down, you didn't get a preview to see yes. anything that is ongoing. So we take you through all that process mm. and then we, we do the sampling. Okay. The process of the sampling is like, like a minute, is that? It is just about the talking, talking. Mm. That takes a bit of a time. Mm. But you undressing, lying down, positioning, and everything yeah. is, is comes into it. And then after that, we take some few information. The information has to do with assessing the risk factors. We will not be able to ascertain exactly whether or not you are at risk of the virus. But at least we would want to have your information compared with the results that would come in. Because we said, apart from the fact that it is only sexually transmitted, we have a lot of risk factors. So we want to be considerate of your age at which you first got sexually exposed. When it comes to cervical cancer, we don't even much emphasize on um, sexual uh, um, activities, as in whether you are sexually active or not. Because one may, might have had sex just once in their lifetime. But because of that first encounter with the virus, after a transition of about 10 to 15 years, you are likely to get it. Mm. And so we want to take all those risk factors into consideration. And then when your results come, we discuss results, pay the information you gave us, and then we take it up from okay. there. Okay, so this testing is the pap smear. Okay, so is it? pap smear is an aspect of the testing. Okay. It's a type to put it. And so currently, US, America, they don't call it pap smear. They basically say um, cervical screening okay. because of the various types that you have. Mm. So either of it you go for is, is equally good to save you. Okay, so, so how do we call it? 
cervical screening. Cervical screening. Sure. Okay, sure. great. Somebody just sent a, a WhatsApp message and, and is asking the cause of the ailment. So perhaps we're taking, mm. we're going back a little. Thank just, you. Uh, just so if you missed the conversation last week, mm. Tuesday, mm. at least you can do a bit of catch up. Mm. Yeah. The cost of the ailment. Yes. What because causes it? The, oh, okay. What causes oh, cervical cause, cancer? Right. The, the cause is by a virus known as human papilloma virus, that big name. Mm. But you can just say um, HPV, um, that's what causes it. Okay. So that it is only by sexual transmission. There is no way if you have never had sex in your life, you should get um, the virus, mm. talk less of having the cervical cancer in the future. Okay. And so anytime a man or a woman, we either it could be Rose meeting a gentleman who had already met another lady. Mm. So this man might be harboring the virus. I meet him, he gives to me. Okay. And then after about 10 to 15 years, that is how long the transition is period could showing. be. showing. Yes, then you start seeing those signs that mm. are associated. But it is basically caused by the known virus, human papilloma virus. Mm. And that is why it is so preventable. Because mostly when you talk about the other cancers, we tell you the causes are unknown, but we have risk factors. But this has a known cause, mm. a known medium of transmission, and then a known transitional period, mm. which makes it very interesting to prevent or truncate the process so no one gets it. And, and I guess because it takes quite a bit to show itself. Exactly. exactly. You might even find it difficult tracking how you even got it. Exactly. Because if for the mm. past 10 years you have either been using protection Thank or you've you. stuck to the same partner. Thank you. Uh, and then suddenly you go and do the test and you're Thank positive, you. then you want to be thinking about 15 years back. Sure, 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 sure. sure. And, and then, you know, sometimes like with the ladies, it's not about the lady being um, or being exposed to multiple sexual partners. Mm. But sometimes you could have just your partner, your husband, as the only only. Mm. But before your husband met you, maybe he might as, he might as well met some other ladies. Yeah. Or even now, he might be having a see, uh, Joyce, something. So multiple. He picks it up. And mm. I usually term it as you become a multiple sexual mm. partner recipient. Mm. Because whatever he goes, pick there, he brings to you. Mm -hmm. So you, you can only get it through sexual activities. Exactly. So if you are either using protection, okay. you shouldn't get cervical cancer, Beautiful. correct? So oh, this, is, this, is, this is one of the most greatest interventions, or the, the medium of primary level prevention mm. is protection. Yes. So either do protection or if you're not you ready abstain. yet, you abstain. Okay. Okay. That is okay. It. Great. Uh, so you can keep your questions coming through on the WhatsApp number 0540109009. We're talking about cervical cancer. Mm. Watch out for our documentary, uh, the second part of it that airs later this evening. Um, Ross is going to take us through because you brought uh, quite a bit of material. Sure, sure. So sure, sure. explain to us what you have on set okay. and what you're going to be teaching us. Okay, all right. So we're going to start with appreciating what the cervix is again mm. like you said some of the audience but before you there. do that can mm. you also because there's a question about okay. symptoms of cervical cancer beautiful okay so um these symptoms are mm, directly not relating to like solely cervical cancer okay but so that we can appreciate it and not take it lightly mm. the number one alarming thing has to do with abnormal vaginal bleeding the abnormal vaginal bleeding could be bleeding during sex or after sex. It needn't be. And so anything like that should be reported. Mm. Or maybe women in our age, age ranges that is normally having a regular menses, so suddenly there's a twist of turn. Okay. You're either bleeding longer or bleeding more often than you ought to, it should be reported. Mm. Or the menopausal women, when you go menopause, you have gone menopause, you shouldn't see blood again. But if you start seeing those bloods, we want you to report. So that's the abnormal vaginal bleeding. Mm. The other bit has to do with very offensive vaginal um, um, discharge. And this discharge sometimes comes with some strains of flesh in it. And it is very offensive to the extent that if a lady or a woman who has it kind of undresses here, it, it will be very un um, uncomfortable for the rest of us to come in. And that is how bad it could be. Mm. And then apart from that too, she could have severe lower abdominal pain okay. and a persistent one. 
which could radiate to the lower back because mm. of the position of the uterus and then um, the other organs associated. And this pain is mm. not coming when you have your menstrual it has, period? It has, it's, at all. Okay. It, it's a persistent thing. Sometimes you take some pain relievers and then you are relieved for a while. Mm. But after a short while, it gets back. And it's, it's as if even the pain relievers you are taking is not doing anything good for mm. you. Because the pain is excruciating, is un undescribable. Okay. And apart from those pains and the discharge, as, as the condition advances or progresses, you lose weight. Even though you are eating well, mm. you lose weight. And okay. another thing is because of the uh, persistent bleeding, you also lose blood. So you would often be transfused and then in no time, because as you are being transfused, some is pouring out mm. like that. And so that is, these are some of the signs. And we don't want anybody to go through those signs before you report. And we're saying you, you can do the screening so we can pick it fast. Because anytime you start seeing any of these signs, it's, it kind of indicates that there could be something. Mm -hmm. That has to be. And you've probably yeah. gotten into the late stage exactly, of it. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And we don't want anybody to okay. get there. There's another question. It says, right. uh, I want to know what age can someone get infected? Is there a particular age? Okay. The age is dependent on when you first had your sexual exposure. Mm. And so um, with the risk factors, one of the things is um, if you start sex earlier than 17 years, um, research has indicated that you are about three times chance of getting cervical cancer mm. because mostly, apart from the fact that it was by virtue of one challenge or the other that exposed you at that early stage, some people keep up to that habit. And so by the time they get to Mama V, our ages, they have uncountable sexual exposures. And they'll tell you, okay, just give me any number. You can mm. put down 10, you can put down 20, and all that, okay? So we don't really say you, have, you, you, you could get the virus at this age. But now what we're saying is that if you are 21 years and you've ever been sexually exposed, go and do the screening. Okay. If you have a child, nine years and above, never been sexually exposed, let us vaccinate. Mm. So that's the angle. Previously, we were doing so three no, years okay. after. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, no, you finish. We are doing three years after sexual exposure. That is where you should start the screening. But okay. we realize it is it's it's not about three years. Some people have some immunosuppressed conditions so much so that the first encounter, maybe in a, a stretch of few months, they could have the virus. They could start showing some changes, pre-cancer cells on the cervix, and so that's why we're now doing the twenty-one years should be the point from for the screening okay you mentioned nine years vaccination sure uh, must uh, must the child do the test okay or once you're sure that mm. i mean because nine years nobody exactly. expects that you'll be sexually active exactly. so is exactly. there a test before or no, so, so for them to? we don't we don't do any test okay. and so even if the person is like 40 years she's never had sex she doesn't need to do the test all she needs to do is to take the vaccine for okay. protection and those who have never been sexually exposed the vaccine gives them um, 100 percent protection but when you get sexually exposed and you screen and vaccinate mm. you enjoy a 70 percent protection okay because it doesn't take care of all the other virus that, that we are talking how about long is today. the cover for now it's for life oh okay. yes but you have to be doing the routine screening mm. yeah okay all right uh, this one says okay i guess we've answered the the question about what age should one start screening and okay. how often should it be done okay how often we right. haven't tackled that so if if the result comes out to be negative, which indicates that there are no pre-cancer cells on the mouth of the womb, you do the screening every two to three years. Okay. This is if you do the VIA or you do the um, pap smear or the other liquid base. But if you do what we call the HPV DNA testing, that tests for whether or not you're at risk of the virus. If you do that one, then you would have to be screening routinely every three to five years okay. and then even with that you could equally vaccinate irrespective of your exposure okay yeah. we're getting more questions Interesting. Uh, this one says i always find it difficult to have sex with my woman uh, complaints pains screams and i have to stop can this mm. be uh okay i guess signs of <laughs> cervical cancer and then comes back with can rape also be part of the cause of cervical cancer uh, mm -hmm. for teenagers okay yep Thank you. Um, starting from the last, uh, the sex is not defined whether it is 
mutually agreed or waived, whichever way it's, there's been that kind of sexual exposure, so you could be at risk of it. But with the adolescent, usually we don't do even the screening at the adolescent's age because they are still growing, mm. they are, their cells and everything is freshly being built. And so we believe in sometimes when they get exposed, because of their growing process, their body can handle the virus. But after the 21 years, that is what we want to be sure of. So as in the body there. can fight it? Yes. And when defeat it? When your immune system is perfect, mm. you could carry the virus the whole of your life and you would never get the cancer. Okay. That's so sometimes you could do the HPV DNA testing and then um, you have the active virus there. We do another diagnostic test to assess any change in the mouth of the womb and everything is perfect. We leave you, go and eat well, enjoy mm. your life, but improve on, um, um, adopt a modified lifestyle okay. so that you don't get reinfected mm. to get your situation worse. And okay. they can live for the rest of their life. All right. Just that like you have to be monitoring to assess how they, they, they perform it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, questions are a lot. Keep them mm. still coming in, but I want us to go to the things that you brought right. and the explanation yeah. that goes with it. Okay, so this, this is just... Um, a small um, uterus, we came with them, so that we have, this is the body of the uterus, of mm -hmm. course, where our babies develop and then we menstruate from, and then this is the mouth of the womb we are talking about. So the procedure doesn't go so deep into the uterus. Okay. It is through the vagina to the cervix here, right? So we coming to look at the various types of the screenings that we have. Okay. The first one we have is called VIA. It is visual inspection with acetic acid. And this one, what we do is that we use vinegar, to a percentage of it, to wash the mouth of the womb. So we vigorously wash the mouth of the womb. Mm -hmm. And then instantly, if there is any change, it would indicate for us to see with our naked eye. You okay. could pick the lesions that there are some white patches there. And then it would require that we do a cryotherapy. The cryotherapy is by way of freezing with carbon dioxide so that whatever cells, abnormal cells that could be there, would um, freeze and thaw off after some weeks, and then you should be good to go when the healing process has taken place. Okay. So that is the VIA. And so I would want to just, um, because that is a whole process, mm. we would want to look at these pictures, and to a large extent, it would help us. So okay. when you look at the, the, the images I have here, these are the normal cervix. So this, you see it here, is a cervix that has never had any baby coming out of it before. That's the first. The very picture. first one. Mm -hmm. And these ones, when you deliver vaginally, you definitely could have some slit on the mouth of the womb, mm -hmm. which is very normal. And you could see these changes too. Some are even reddened so much so that this reddish, when you have sex with your partner, you would definitely bleed. Any contact on it will cause a bleed. Mm -hmm. It does not necessarily mean it is cancer related, but it is called inflammation, which we could give you treatment and then you should be better. And then the other ones that you see there as well. Mm -hmm. So even though you have some changes here, it does not indicate um, anything relating to cervical cancer. Okay. The other bit has to do with the next one. These are pre-cancer cells. So I mentioned that when the VI or the, um, the wash has taken place, you have those patches there. Mm. And when it is picked early at the stage, a lot could be done. The cryotherapy could be done so that you would not be able to advance to the cancer stage. Okay. But mostly when you advance to the cancer stage, and it is depending again on the main stage, it becomes a bit difficult to handle, even though it can be intervened. Mm. So this is the first phase. And this type is very less expensive, as, as little as 30 cities, 50 cities could enable you to um, have such screening done. I know Ridge is doing it, then someone polyclinic is doing it. The other teaching hospitals are equally doing the VI. In the other regions, yes, because you know, my, regions, uh, exactly. some of my viewers are not in the exactly, greater region. In the greater region. So mm. these are the facilities that are doing it. And then virtually all the, the centers of Marie Stokes International, they also do VI screenings. Okay. There. And apart from that, with Ridge, it would go for free from the 3rd of February to 28th February. Absolutely yes, free. For the VI. For the VI, okay. That is it, okay. So that's just one that aspect is, of that the is just one aspect of, of the screening. screening. Okay. So you can choose to go for this one depending on your level of income. 
Okay. Then the other bit has to do with the pap smear, what what the most famous one. Mm. So this is the kit for the pap smear. All okay. Right. This is the and one then, that I, I remember drawing. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 Right. So this one comes with, we have a glass here, and then we have, this one we call it a brush or cytology brush, mm. so cyto brush. And then we have the spatula. We have it these two ends because years back you would have to take some vagina swabbing before you do the mouth of the womb. Mm -hmm. But now you just go straight to the mouth of the womb. Okay. And then we have what we call fixative. This contain some substance that would help you to preserve whatever sample you took so that you don't it doesn't go with. Okay. So picking the uterus before for a procedure. What mm -hmm. you need to do is that you either wash your hands for us, that is it. It's always about like that, like that. So either wash your hands or use your sanitizer, mm -hmm. and then you put on your pair of gloves, and then you get ready for your, this is called speculum, all right? Okay. And this comes in sizes. We have the very small one. We have even those that could be used for, those who are not sexually exposed, maybe you want to do a procedure mm -hmm. and we have to use it for you. And then we also have the large one for those who have bigger space, okay? okay. So we put on our glass like that. One, just one. I'll, I'll, I'll do two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then the next thing is, as the woman has been positioned in mm -hmm. the bed, what you need to do is to pass the speculum. We want to lubricate it a bit so that it don't need to be that friction. Mm. And then we position it by opening through and then it picks on the mouth of the womb like that. Mm -hmm. So this is what is going to be. Okay. And we're going to have access to here because remember the body, the thighs and mm. everything is here. So this part is obscured, but you can see through here. Okay. And then the next thing is that we have the spatula and then you gently direct it inside like that. And then you take your swab by scraping or sweeping on the mouth of the womb gently okay. with a spatula. And then you smear it. That's what's called pap smear. Mm. You smear it on the glass slide okay. the way you want it to be. So this will take care of the outer part of the cervix. We call it the ecto cervix. Don't mind us with that, uh, the technical terms. And then the brush will go into the inner aspects of it mm. and then you do the same sweeping okay. you smear on it and then quickly you fix with the fixative that i mentioned of what um, the reagent that fixes it so that it would preserve the sample mm. you allow it to air dry and then you are good to go that's it but this one is not instant so this goes to the laboratory and almost all the labs in Ghana read this one. So mm. both the private and the um, government facilities are doing the pap smear. You go there, and it ranges between um, 80 cities and then 130 cities. Okay. But around this period, there's so much great discount going for that one. So you shouldn't have it as expensive as it's mm. supposed to be. So the so that earlier is test one. is an instant one where you get the results. Yeah, this one is the instant. Okay, but the what, one. what would the what's the result likely to be? It's either going to indicate you have some changes on the mouth of the womb or you don't have any change. Okay. And then the test, none of these tests is testing for cancer cells. We are testing for pre-cancer cells. So that is what is going to tell you that you are not at, you, there are no changes on the mouth of the womb. But it doesn't test for the virus. Okay. There's another one that tests for the virus, and that's oh. uh, that'll be the next one we are going for. Okay, great. Okay, right. So we are done with the conventional one. Mm -hmm. Now we have this other one. Let me permit me to drop this one, and then this comes with a liquid or a reagent like that. Okay, right. So that is it. There's a liquid in it, mm -hmm. unlike the other one that you fix, and then it has a brush. It's either like this, or it is like this particular one that you can look at for. Okay. Okay. So you can have a feel of it. At sure. least just just feel it, and then see that mm. it is friendly for you. Oh, these are, okay. These are friendly. Okay. It? it looks it looks hard, but it's not. It's actually Mercy. very soft. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So unlike the pap smear that has um, the spatula and the brush. This one is designed to take care of the two activities of both the outer cleaning or the sweeping and then the inner sweeping. Mm. And so what you do is, having positioned the woman, you have, okay, you have your brush mm -hmm. and then it goes, sits in, the longer bit goes inside 
and then the shutter part sits at the opening. Okay. And then you do sweeping five times, mm. okay, 360 by five, that okay. clockwise move. So you're going to go one, and then you go two, then you come again three, you do again four, and then the last one five. Mm. Then you wash in the reagent. Okay. okay. You vigorously would wash until you don't have any cells in the mouth of the, um, in the teeth of the brush. Mm. But in the events where you sold after rinsing it in, you notice you still have some cells in the teeth of the brush. You can the, break the head of the brush and then drop it in. Mm. And this one is called liquid-based cytology. The most, most advanced countries now, they aren't doing the pop smear. Mm. They are doing the liquid-based cytology. Okay. So the liquid-based cytology can be used for two things. You can use it for your normal pre-cancer cell screening. Mm -hmm. That is a liquid base. Which this one would have Which taken this care one of. Which this one would equally smear. take care of. Okay. Good. And then the other additional thing with the normal screening is because you kind of swept around, any other thing other than uh, pre-cancer cells mm. could be picked by the result. Okay. And so if you have some other infections, it could be picked by the result and then you are treated appropriately mm. as required. And apart from that, it could also be used for testing for HPV DNA testing. And so that one is doing the test to ascertain whether or not you are at risk of the virus. Mm. And if you are, which type could be present? Okay. And so if the HPV DNA testing gives you the results that you are not at risk of the virus, then you are like 98% not at risk of the virus. Mm. But the other screenings is just the same for the pre-cancer cells, okay. which doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have the virus in mm. you. You could have the virus, but that was not what it was meant to test for. Okay. So it is limited by that. So how much and is this last test that you thank did? Thank you. So we have the liquid base for the same pre-cancer screening. Um, it was 150. But because of this campaign, it is going for 80 cities, mm. starting from today's week. Okay. At Reproductive oh, as in next week? Yes, as in next week. Okay. Yes, at Reproductive Health Center. Mm. And then the HPV DNA testing um, is 300 Ghana, but it will go for 200 Ghana cities. Okay. So if you can afford the 300, that is perfect. The other interesting thing about this one is that if you do just a pre cancer test, and then later you're like, okay, Rose, I think I would want to do the HPV DNA testing. You don't need to come and lie down for me to take the test again. When they take the sample or when they receive the sample, after working on it, it sits with them for a period of about six weeks. And so within that period, you can still come and then would use the same sample to do the testing. Mm. We don't have any laboratory here yet in Ghana that reads for the liquid base. But all that's something similar. But the other laboratories, we don't. Okay. And so this one goes to South Africa. This is MDS um, Lancet. Mm. They take it to South Africa for you. So that's the only place you can do this test. And then we also have the um, India. The, mm. But they have their um, represented, the rep representing facilities or laboratories. Okay. And so we work with them. And then they come for the sample, okay. take it out, bring the results, and we are good to go. Great. So for, um, the, for the sake of my viewers, which, which, which of the tests would you recommend? Which one should we do? Ooh, okay. You can do either of the three. You can do either of the three okay. because we don't want to be too biased. Okay. So if you can afford the VIA because of the less cost involved, mm. that would be good. Okay. And but if we all have money, the best, best, best is to do the uh, HPV DNA testing because that you know it's giving you two results. Okay. You have the pre-cancer cells test, and then it is also testing for whether or not you are at risk of the virus. Okay. And great. it will pick up for the appropriate intervention. Okay. And then you can also vaccinate. All right. Because you did the HPV DNA. Okay, so we have to quickly wrap up. But somebody asked a question of right. uh, whites. Okay. Uh, what were the difference between whites and the cervical cancer we're talking about? Okay. So both have some level of discharge, but the white or the candida, as we call it, that is not that offensive, mm. as you can imagine, compared to the cervical cancer. Okay. And this one, sometimes, you know, every woman has an amount of a discharge, which is not offensive, mm. which is colorless. But this one, sometimes the, the one we call the white could mm. go a bit off the usual color, okay. and then it might be a bit offensive, but not as terribly offensive as the civic cancer. Okay. They are not friends at all. Okay. And I, I also just wanted to ask, if you're in your menstrual mm. period, mm. then you cannot do this then test. Then you cannot do the test. And okay. if you wish till the menses is ended, then okay. you can 
comfortably. Can All right. Um, is there a telephone number that you would give out? Sure. Uh, sure so sure, so we can sure. answer the rest of the questions that I haven't been able to read uh, exactly. because we've got lots of okay. messages still dropping right. in. Okay. Yes. So uh, we have 0243-840-804. Zero two four three eight four zero eight zero four. I'm sure we would be able to serve you as you call this number. All right. I wish we could have added some more, but when you call, we would we'll call this number. Okay. Them. So, Getty from Coco Mlemle says, can pregnant women go in uh, for, uh, you know, and do this check for cervical okay. cancer? Thank you. A pregnant woman can do it, provided you don't have any issue at all at all. You know, some women, when they are pregnant, there could be bleeding, there could be mm. um, the, the mouth of the womb opens earlier than it expected. So, if you don't have any issue, you okay. can do it. However, it's not so an emergency. The pregnancy will soon You could end, wait. So you could also wait. Have the baby. Have all right. Yeah. Ross, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you for taking mm -hmm. us through all the tests. Mm -hmm. uh, and somebody was asking if any of the procedures. I have done this one. Uh, okay. It was not painful. I couldn't actually feel it. When they were I'm done, I asked. Like, are you done? Are you done? Yeah. You see? So it's <laughs> just easy like that. Forget mm -hmm. about the tools. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Ross, thank you very much you uh, for your time, time this mm -hmm. morning. We're still doing the education of cervical mm -hmm. cancer. So, lots of conversations mm -hmm. to come in uh, the days ahead.